I now request Ambassador Vijay Nambiar, trustee of the Lalit Doshi Memorial Foundation, to deliver the welcome address. Mrs. Pratima Doshi, Dr. Vipin Sharma, Mr. Vikram Singh Mehta, my co-trustee Bharat Doshi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the 28th Lalit Doshi Memorial Lecture. As you can see, my batchmate, classmate, and good friend Ajit Nimbalkar was supposed to be here to deliver his welcome address. He's had a, an indisposition which has prevented him from coming. And uh, when Bharat suggested I should replace him, I did it with alacrity. <clears throat> This is the first function being held after two years of the COVID when uh, the lectures were delivered in virtual mode. And therefore, we are happy that we are re-establishing the tradition at the Yashwantra Chauhan uh, Auditorium. That is a tradition that, which has spread since, uh, which has been here since 1995? Since 1995 itself. And since that time, the Lalit Doshi Memorial Lecture has become a major event in the public calendar of Mumbai. Uh, we are happy that uh, you have come for, to, to re-establish this tradition after this hiatus. What shall I say about Lalit Doshi? He was an exemplary civil servant, yes. He was a high-minded karma yogi, yes. He was a loyal friend, and he was a devoted family man. I knew him as a classmate in St. Xavier's College in the, from the year of grace 1959 to 1963. <clears throat> and subsequently, in the service, he was in the IAS, I was in the Foreign Service. Our paths had crossed several times. He was an exceptional person, and I can I'm tempted to recall what I had said when I myself was asked to deliver this address in more than 15 years ago. I had said then, for many years, I have shared with Lalit the same desk and bench at college. Then, as now, I was struck by the unobtrusive seriousness of his demeanor, the fire of devotion to duty, that burned so steadily within him, as well as the gentleness and compassion with which he engaged with friends and colleagues. These qualities resonated strongly with all of the people around him and exemplified the inner spiritual integrity which he represented. At that time, I also had occasion to refer to a phrase or a set of phrases from the Viveka Chudamani from, of Shankaracharya. And I'm tempted to repeat them today with your permission, Bharat. It goes as follows. Shanta mahanto nivasanti santo vasanta vallo kahitam charanta tirna swayam bhima bhavarna vajanam ahetunan yani tarayanta. It says that there are good souls, calm and magnanimous, who do good to others, as does the spring, and who have crossed the dreadful ocean of finitude, that is life and death, but continue to help others to cross the same without any ulterior motive. I think this exemplifies the character, the singular character which Lalit Doshi represented. I shall now seek to talk about, for a very short while, about the guest of honor and speaker today, who is an accomplished corporate personality, a serious scholar and well-known man of letters, and an articulate public intellectual. A more detailed welcome and description will obviously be given by Bharat. I have actually been introduced to him only yesterday. So I cannot claim to have known him for very long. But I did know his father. 
In fact, both his parents were distinguished members of the Indian Foreign Service, which I also have the privilege of being, of belonging to for almost 40 years in my career. These two persons who represented exceptionally gift, exceptional gifts of intellectual and personal qualities, which have been remembered and cherished by uh, colleagues in the service. The memory of uh, their service to the Foreign Service and to the country. I did not serve with Foreign Secretary Jagat Mehta in any post, but had numerous occasions to meet with him and partook of valuable insights that he was able to give because he represented, in a sense, the dean or the doyen of the China, what we call the China Mafia, but it's actually the China community in the Indian Foreign Service. Most of us, I spent my first uh, posting, the first two years of my service studying Chinese in Hong Kong, and then went off to Beijing in 1970. Mr. Jagat Mehta had served in China, but before that, he was the chair of the Boundary Commission, which was set up after the visit of Premier Chou Enlai in 1960, he was the chairman of the Boundary Commission in 19, established in 1960. And after the unfortunate conflict in 1962, he was posted during very, very difficult years between 63 and 66 as charge in Beijing. These were memories, and, the, and subsequently, as Foreign Secretary, I also recall that he was instrumental in getting me posted to New York to do my first stint of multilateral work. Uh, he'd met me in 1978 when I was posted in Belgrade and the ministerial non-aligned meeting was held in 1978 there. And uh, some of the senior colleagues of mine who were junior to uh, <clears throat> the foreign secretary, Mr. Mehta, conspired to get him to post me to a multilateral uh, work in the United Nations. I subsequently benefited from it because after that it was a kind of an engagement of, with, with, that I had with multilateral work which lasted almost till 2017. <clears throat> While welcoming all of you and the chief guest to this function this evening, I think I shall straight away get on to the next part of the program, which is really the, which concerns the MIDC, I should think for now, after which, of course, uh, Bharat will speak to you in more detail about our chief guest. Thank you. Thank you.